Welcome back to Hysteract. Today, we have a bit of a weird one. The man who stole Einstein's brain. Einstein is well regarded as one of the most intelligent people to ever walk the planet. Some may regard him as a genius, in fact. So, you can imagine there would be a lot of people wanting to know what makes him more intelligent than most and how his brain works. This guy was that interested that he decided to steal his brain. Yes, you heard that correctly, he stole Einstein's brain. You may be wondering how this was possible. It all started in the 19th century when the brains of geniuses were often preserved so that scientists could try to determine the origins of that person's intelligence. For example, half of the brain of Charles Babbage, the inventor of the first computing machine, is still on display at the Hunterian Museum at London's Royal College of Surgeons. Einstein is known for many things, but the most famous invention was the theory of relativity. This is essentially the theory that gravity is a curving or warping of space and time. This theory is still being proven correct to this day, as in 2021, light from behind a black hole was first detected, proving the theory of relativity to be correct. But Einstein, being one of the smartest people on the planet, was aware of the fact that scientists might want to study his brain after death. So, he explicitly said he didn't want this, as such studies really produce useful information. Unfortunately, Einstein died in the early morning of April the 18th, 1955. The pathologist who conducted the autopsy, Dr. Thomas Harvey, decided at that point to remove the brain on his own initiative for a future study. Dr. Harvey took Einstein's brain home, divided it into 240 pieces, and then stored it into two mason jars filled with saloidin. Shortly after Einstein's cremation, his son, Hans Albert, found out about the theft and was furious. But Dr. Harvey convinced him to let him keep the brain. This is assumed to have been because at some point Einstein had given people the belief that he was happy for scientists to use his brain for research. But we will never know. He kept Einstein's brain for the next several decades, at one point storing it in a cider box underneath a beer cooler, hoping to unlock the secrets of Einstein's intelligence in the future. The fate of Einstein's brain was mostly unknown until 1978 when a reporter tracked Harvey down in Wichita, Kansas. He talked to Dr. Thomas Harvey about the brain and asked him to see some pictures of the slimy organ. Dr. Harvey then pulled out a big mason jar which contained the main bulk of Einstein's brain. The reporter then published his article in the New Jersey Monthly. In turn, this brought a flood of requests for samples of the brain to study. Perhaps the most interesting study was Britt Anderson's study at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, 1996. He found that the number of neurons was equivalent to brains in the control group, but they were more tightly packed, allowing, perhaps, for faster processing of information. Later, in 2012, an anthropologist, Dean Falk, worked with a set of previously unseen photographs of Einstein's brain that Harvey had taken with an extract camera. She found that Einstein had an extra ridge on his mid-frontal lobe, the part used for making plans and working memory. Most people had three ridges, but Einstein had four. She names a 2013 study that looked at Einstein's unusual corpses callosum, the bundle of fibres connecting the left and right hemispheres of the brain. The researchers found that Einstein's was thicker than in control groups, suggesting enhanced cooperation between brain hemispheres. From these and other studies emerged the press who wrote headlines suggesting that scientists had discovered the special neural wiring responsible for E equals MC squared. Sadly, the truth is that links with Einstein's genius have never been anything more than speculative. You can't just take one brain of someone who is different from everybody else, and we all pretty much are, and say, ha ha, we have found the cause of genius. Many more studies did claim to find some differences between Einstein's brain and that of a normal person. 
but they also lacked representative control groups, making their findings suspect. Representative control groups are essentially groups of people that are shielded from variables to ensure the accuracy of the results. Even if these studies had been conducted more effectively, neurology still hasn't determined whether the physical structures of the brain actually affect a person's intelligence. Today, what remains of Einstein's brain resides at the Penn Medicine Princeton Medical Center in Plainsboro, New Jersey. Almost nobody is allowed to see it, not even researchers, but many more pieces of Einstein's brain could possibly still be found across America thanks to Dr. Thomas Harvey and his habit of giving away pieces to curious friends. Maybe it's worth a check in the attic.